So I'm going to flood that black. Get out of there. Flood black. And I'm going to make my rims here. Um, just a. Uh, oh, screw it, let's do a rectangular one instead. I think that should be fully shiny. And I'm going to change it to a nice shiny value, like so. Let's make it really hardcore shiny. And just flood that. And switch up our UVs. Okay, deselect. Okay, file, save as. This is going to be my specular map. Should be fairly sweet. Or not. It's not going to really show up, but who cares? It's just demonstrating the whole process. Goodbye, Photoshop. And let's drag in another bitmap here, throw it in here. And I look for my car specular, load it up, hook it up to my specular level. Alright, close my slate editor, and it should be a little bit more shiny looking, I think. Alright, save it. Alright, so now I'm going to start doing the bones for setting up for UDK export. Alright, so I'm going to go to my creation panel, go to system, select bones, create two bones, and right click to complete, delete the first bone, get the second bone, this over here now. Gonna zero it all out by right clicking the spinner, go to rotate mode and zero all that out as well, and give it a name under your modifier panel here. I'm going to call it root bone. Should be pretty sweet. I'm going to just quickly shift out a copy. Uh, a copy is fine. So I'm going to call front left tire first. I'm just going to quickly rotate this through 90 degrees. Um, this is some quirky thing with 3ds Max export to UDK. I haven't quite got my head around yet. When I do, I'll tell everybody about it. Alright, so what I want to do now is go F4 for edge face mode. And I just want to cut edges in here. So what I'm going to do, just is just so I can snap my my joints into location. So I'm just going to select those two vertices and do a connect. And let's just do that across all of it. Connect. And you'll see why shortly I'm doing this. Connect. Okay. Connect. Okay, why did I do that? Okay, let's explore why. So grabbing my bone here, I need to snap it into position. So I'm going to switch on my snap tool, right click it to get my options. Switch off grid points and do what's called a midpoint. And then selecting the little yellow thing at the end there. Okay, look at that sweet. That's perfectly aligned in the center of the wheel, so basically when that wheel rotates on code, it's going to ro rotate with no wobbling action whatsoever. So shift copy out, let's go as front right tire. And let's switch on snap, I can do that by hitting S on the keyboard also. Okay, I need to come on snap. Okay, it's a little bit funky. There we go. And shift drag in the copy. So I'm going to call back. B for back. Tire. Okay, where is it? Okay, let's rotate around so you can see what's going on. Select the yellow circle and snap it into position. And shift drag in another copy. Okay, so just switch off snap. Drag it. Okay. And snap on again with S and put it into position. S, oh, Z will zoom in and also S off. 
snap. And I didn't name this, I'm just going to close this grid setting here. Should be back left tire 0001 and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to grab my root bone here and move it up somewhere in the center of the car and I need to do a couple of things now. First I'm going to go to my display options and switch off my geometry. I'm going to marquee select all of those uh, new fancy tire uh, bones there and I'm going to select my link option here and select drag out when you see all the four links there and link it to my root. So when I select my root and move it, everything else moves with it. So let's go back to my display panel and bring on a geometry again. So I don't need to see it like that anymore. Alright, so I'm going to select this car now and I'm going to go into my modifier list and chuck on what's called a skin. Whoops. Skin. There you go. And then bring it up. It adds some bones to it. There they are. Make sure you don't add the high poly car. Look out for the symbols here. Tells you everything you need to know. Select and it adds it to a vehicle. Now, of course, if I go grab my uh, left front wheel here and spin it, oh, not good. It's also controlling parts of the vehicle and the wheel, which is not cool. So I need to go back to my skin here and I'm going to drop down the menu here and do what's called end it, edit envelopes. Now, you can do lots of funky things like painting weights and stretching out the envelopes and things for influences and stuff, but uh, since this is mostly a rigid object, I'm just going to go select my root bone. I'm going to do a select vertice mode here. It's like one of my vertices here. I'm going to grow my selection. I also might just select up here and keep growing. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm just going to just blanket assign it to this root bone. And that's done by going down here in the slider a little ways. What's going on? And doing something that's called weight table. Now changing the option here from all vertices to selected vertices. Go to edit, select all. Just select this empty row here under root bone. And plug in the value 1. And you can close it and you can get out of this. It'll edit envelopes and you can go test that joint here, which should be whew, everything's beautiful. Alright, that's it. So we're ready for export. Save. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get this going. So I'm going to select the car, I'm going to go up to export, and I'm going to export an FBX. I'll just chuck it on my desktop. I'm going to call it uh, Rainbow Car. Um, that should be alright. Save. Okay, what are you going to include under Geometry? Just moving groups. Uh, and also Embed Media. Okay, that will include all your textures inside of that same FBX. So it should be a nice simple import process into UDK. So just go OK. Um, polycar, low polycar. I thought it was just export and selected. No, it doesn't matter. OK. All right, so we should load UDK. Now, I'm using UDK July 2011. So to load UDK, what you want to do is go to the editor, it's under binaries. You'll find something called Win32 or Win64. Now I'm using 64-bit uh, Windows, so I'm going to use the Win64. And what you do is you look for UDK here, and you right-click out and create a shortcut. And you end up with a shortcut like so. And then you edit its properties. And what you want to add to the end here is the word editor with a space there. What that means is when you run it, it will run the editor. Okay, I'm allowing access here. Yes. Okay, accept. 